In this lecture, we're going to impose a topology on every sheaf. Uh, it's sort of like uh, passing from a simplicial complex to its geometric realization, except we will do this with, uh, with sheaves. So let's get started. Uh, if L is a simplicial complex, then uh, remember that this uh, L with the bars is its geometric realization. And um, for each simplex, tau and L, we will write uh, tau support with its interior um, symbol. So this is the interior of the realization of the simplex within the geometric realization of the entire simplicial complex. So this is the open set, so you throw away the boundary. Um, and now, uh, the realization of the star is going to be the disjoint union over all the simplices that are bigger than tau of their interiors. Um, so if you have, if tau is this vertex, then its star is going to be all the edges and all the two simplices and so on, the, the open two simplices, so the boundary will not be included. So let's remove the boundaries. Um, so those are all missing. Um, and now you look at every point in this uh, uh, in this uh, open star. I mean, you pick a higher dimensional simplex and you're living in its interior, right? So you're there or over here, something like that. Um, okay, and so for each point in this geometric realization, we will write tau sub x for the unique simplex. tau in L containing uh, x in its interior. So there's, uh, because it's a disjoint union, there's going to be a single one whose uh, interior contains the point x. Okay, so uh, these were all old facts. I mean, there's no sheaf here yet. So uh, let's just uh, leave that on the side. Uh, and so let s be a sheaf on L. And here is the main, uh, one of the main definitions of this, uh, of this lecture. Uh, the etal space um, of S is a topological space. So let's define uh, the set first, and then we will define the, the uh, topology. So I'll write it as ES, and this consists of all pairs XV, so that V is in, um, uh, so uh, X is in the geometric realization of L, and V is a vector in the stock assigned by S to the unique simplex whose interior contains the point X. So that's the, uh, that's the set. Um, and now we need a topology. And so um, we will define the topology in terms of basic open sets. So every other open set is a union uh, or intersection of these. Um, so let's write them as u, uh, tau v. Uh, so these are all going to be open sets inside this atal space. Um, indexed by a simplex tau and a vector uh, v in uh, that lives in the stock of tau um, and and so here is what each such basic open set looks like so it's the set of all x and v uh, sorry w so these are going to be points in the tall space. So W has to be in uh, the stock of tau x. It's a vector in the stock of tau x. Um, so that tau x lies in the open star of tau. And the restriction map uh, of the sheaf, which sends, um, uh, so going from tau to tau x, that is going to send the vector v to W. So it's a mouthful, but but it's a perfectly well-defined uh, topological space. And um, 
uh, this space comes with a map, which is a projection map, so it's a surjective map, pi s, which is going from this ital space uh, down to the geometric realization of L, uh, sending each pair, so you just forget the vector part, and you send things back down to the point. Um, so this map has two special properties. So what are the two properties? The first one is that uh, so every time you have this map, uh, a fiber of this map, pi inverse x, uh, this is going to be uh, x cross the stock of tau x. Uh, so because this is just a point cross a vector space, uh, the, this, this uh, fiber over x is a vector space. So every stock, every point stock of pi s, uh, not stock, every fiber of pi s uh, over no matter what point you chose uh, has a structure of a vector space and the vector space uh, that it has a structure of is a stock uh, over the unique simplex containing the point x. And two, the other property that's nice is that the um, restriction of pi s to any of these basic opens, tau v, gives a map from tau v to the star of tau, which is a homeomorphism. So each of these basic open sets, u tau v, um, which were used to generate the topology, uh, each of them, when you attack it with, uh, with the projection map, pi, is going to give you a homeomorphism onto the uh, star of tau open star of tau. Uh, so I guess this is a topological uh, open star, so I should write it like this. Okay, good. Um, it's all spaces are really, really annoying to try and draw. I mean, you, you, what, what ends up happening is that you have a simplex, and on, uh, so this is a simplex tau, uh, and, and on top of it, there's um, this, this continuum um, there's there's a copy of this simplex for every uh, uh, vector in the stock. So if the stock was a one-dimensional, let's say it was R, then there would be a continuum many copies of uh, of R. So these will all have u tau uh, v for different choices of v, and they're all going to project down to that um, to that simplex tau. So they're not really fun to visualize but they contain some extremely, extremely special subspaces, um, which we will define as follows. So for every subcollection of simplices, uh, L prime, which is not necessarily a subcomplex, I want to be clear about this, um, the set of sections of S over L prime is given by, uh, we'll write it like this, gamma L prime S. Uh, so I'm defining this set. This is going to be the set of all maps H from the realization of L prime to the etal space of the sheaf, uh, continuous, which compose with the uh, the this canonical projection map to give the identity. So what does a point like that? What does it look like uh, in, in in terms of our drawing? So you you have uh, let's say this simplex on the right, this tau was in L prime. So you take a point in the interior of that simplex, and now what you need is some point in this fiber that that lives over um, over our red point. And so it's just a choice of a V. Um, but the fact that this is continuous imposes uh, stronger constraints on what sorts of Vs we can, we are allowed to choose when you have a section. So here's a proposition, which I am not going to prove here, but you can find a complete proof in the notes. Um, 
given uh, a section h l prime to the et al space of uh, of the sheaf s um, it it holds that um, uh, the map h is constant on the interior of every simplex in l prime so uh, this is a, a consequence of continuity um, that that this h cannot assign different vectors to different um, uh, different points in the geometric realization which lie in the interior of the same simplex. So uh, a clue as to why this is the case uh, you can you can find in the diagram over here. I mean, if you had another point on the interior of the same simplex, uh, the you'd have to send it to the same um, copy of um, uh, in in the fiber, which is a disjoint union of these uh, u tau v's by continuity. Otherwise, this connected set would break into two which a continuous map is not allowed to do. And therefore, it, they both must be assigned the same V value. And a simple consequence of that is that gamma L prime S has the structure of a vector, a vector space. Uh, the reason for that being that you can just think of H as assigning values now to simplices instead of uh, points. And therefore, it's assigning uh, vectors in the stocks uh, of each simplex to uh, to that simplex, and therefore um, you can add and scale uh, all of these pointwise, so simplex-wise. So that's uh, those are some fun consequences of uh, of continuity of uh, such sections. So the sections we love most are the ones that are defined for the entire collection of simplices. So we call gamma L S the vector space of uh, global sections of the sheaf of uh, S. And uh, the reason we've been talking about uh, sections and all of this is the following result, um, which states that for any sheaf S on a simplicial complex L, there is an isomorphism between the zeroth cohomology of L with coefficients in that sheaf um, and the space of global sections uh, over uh, of that sheaf. And uh, again, uh, this one is uh, an exercise, so I'm not going to prove it fully, but I want you to think about the following uh, sort of initial step of the proof. So H0 is defined to be the kernel of um, the zeroth co-boundary map. Um, and you should be quotienting it by an image, but the image of the thing you have to quotient it by is zero. So there's nothing to really quotient by. Um, and this uh, is a block matrix, uh, which we write as, um, so here we're going to have edge stocks. So there could be an edge here, and here we're going to have vertex stocks. Uh, so each edge, these, so if each edge has, has uh, these two vertices in its boundary. So if you look at the row that corresponds to uh, this, this edge, there are only going to be two places, two blocks, where you can get something non-zero. So the first one and the second one. So what I, what I want to say is if E equals V0, V1. So this is an edge and these are its boundary vertices then everything else is going to be zero. And so now if you think about that block structure and what it would take for a vector to be in the kernel of this block matrix, it will follow that, um, uh, that 
that the restriction maps um, from uh, V0 to E and V1 to E um, have to behave really, really nicely with respect to um, the, the choices of vectors uh, that were chosen by the section. So um, if you chase this through and realize uh, what the kernel of this matrix does, you will see that it has to be a global section. And that's the proof. So zeroth cohomology is measuring global sections, and global sections are compatible assignments of um, vectors in the stocks to simplices. So what I mean by compatible is that if H um, is a global section of the sheaf, then remember we can we can just talk about the values it assigns to uh, simplices rather than points. Then um, for every simplex, uh, so for every I, I guess we could say for every face relation, uh, tau less than tau prime, we have uh, the following uh, compatibility. So com compatibility, which looks like this. Uh, you have the, the restriction map of the sheaf from tau to tau prime. Um, you are allowed to um, take the value that the section takes on tau, uh, and that's going to be something in the stock of tau, and therefore this uh, restriction map will send it to something in the stock of tau prime. But the point of being a global section is that it will send it exactly to the value that the section takes on tau prime. So we have this compatibility. So that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is that passing from a sheaf to its atoll space and then looking at all these sections that live as subsets of the atoll spaces, images of continuous maps, there's no loss of information uh, in, in doing that. So you can recover a sheaf completely from its at all space. Um, and the way to do that is uh, the stock over a simplex are simply the sections over the star. And uh, the restriction map uh, is obtained by noting that any section uh, from the star of tau to uh, the atoll space restricts to uh, a section on the star of tau prime, which is going to be smaller. So you get all the stocks and all of the restriction maps uh, using just the data of the atoll space. So it's a, it's a completely equivalent way of looking at a sheaf but it helps you understand a little bit about what zeroth cohomology is measuring. It's measuring the vector space of compatible assignments of stocks, uh, of vectors in stocks to simplices in the underlying base space. Um, so that's it for the et al space and our interpretation of, um, of H0, uh, the zeroth sheaf cohomology. In the next lecture, we're going to look at various operations and sheaves from a, from a categorical uh, viewpoint. So I'll see you there.